So guys, let us now talk about the spermatic cord and the layers of the scrotum and uh, we'll see that how these uh, layers of spermatic cord are continuing onto the wall of scrotum also. Uh, we already know that spermatic cord is one of the content of the uh, uh, this inguinal canal. So whatever we have inside the spermatic cord is also the content of the inguinal canal. So let's talk about the layers in the spermatic cord. So uh, starting from outside to inside, the outermost layer, which is called as the external spermatic fascia. So first we have this external spermatic fascia. What is important here to know in spermatic cord and even in the layers of scrotum that these layers are continuing from where? Like external spermatic fascia as we said, it is actually the continuation from external oblique aponeurosis. So the external oblique aponeurosis is the one which extends down and forms this external spermatic fascia. Then the layer which is inside, in between, that is the cremastric layer. The second layer that you are looking at inside, here this is the cremastric fascia or cremastric layer. Cremastric fascia or cremastric layer. Well, cremastric layer when I am saying, so we have a cremastric muscle as well as cremastric fascia in it. it. It's a layer which is made up of partly by the fascia and partly by the muscle. So cremastric muscle and fascia, the, the better word to use here is cremastric muscle and fascia. And this cremastric fascia is the continuation from the internal oblique. It is a continuation from the internal oblique. It is attached to the conjoint tendon. Please understand that. Cremastric muscle, when you talk about the attachment of cremastric muscle, it is written that it is attached to the, to the conjoint tendon. Conjoint tendon is made up of internal oblique as well as transverse abdominis. But cremastric muscle is an extension of internal oblique muscle only and not transverse abdominis. Transverse abdominis muscle is believed uh, not to have any extension uh, below the uh, abdominal wall, neither in the scrotum or in the, the spermatic cord. So it's the internal oblique muscle which forms the cremastic fascia and transverse abdominis muscle will not send any extension deep or below in the spermatic cord. Then we have the third layer which obviously is the internal spermatic fascia. That is the internal spermatic fascia. An internal spermatic fascia, please note, it is the extension of the fascia transversalis. Internal spermatic fascia, it is the extension of the fascia transversalis. As I said, transverse abdominis muscle is not sending the extensions down. In. It's the fascia transversalis muscle which is forming the internal spermatic fascia. So these are the layers of the spermatic cord first. And the important thing is that where they're coming from. What... Uh, fascia or the muscle on the abdominal wall will continue down to form these layers. Now looking into the content, obviously it's a spermatic cord. So the one important content here will be the testicular artery. And you'll see the testicular artery is surrounded by this venous plexus called as the pempeniform plexus. Sieve-like plexus, it's a pempeniform plexus. So we got this testicular artery. Well, it's a direct branch from the iota. We'll discuss in the branches of iota. It's a direct branch from the iota, the testicular artery. And this plexus, as we said, is called as a pempeniform plexus. That is a pempeniform plexus. Not only this, you will also appreciate the remnant of the processus vaginalis as well inside this. When the descendants of the testis, when it pushes that uh, uh, process of vaginalis, you know, the layer out outside the testis is tunica vaginalis. So the remnant will be seen in the spermatic cord and that remnant is called as the processus vaginalis. These are the remnant of. These are remnant of processus vaginalis.
processes which are nervous. What else will be seen inside? Uh, we'll also see the ductus difference. If you see the lower part of the spermatic cord, there will be ductus difference. It will also be surrounded by this venous plexus here. And artery of this ductus difference will be seen as well. So that is the ductus difference or the vas difference. This is the artery to ductus difference. The artery to ductus difference. That's a question also, okay, artery to ductus difference arises from where? Uh, we'll discuss that part, but just to tell you here itself, artery to ductus difference usually come from the superior vesicular artery. It can come from inferior vesicular also, but it usually is seen coming out of the superior vesicular artery, the one which supplies the bladder, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery. So that gives off the artery to ductus difference. The nerve seen inside here is the genital branch of genitofemoral nerve. I hope you remember the genitofemoral nerve. We talked about it in the lumbar plexus. That genitofemoral nerve. Now, when we were talking about the lower limb, we saw the nerve which was supplying the roof of the femoral triangle. That was a femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. And that femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve was forming the afferent for the cremastric reflex. This is the nerve which supplies the cremastric muscle. This is the nerve which supplies cremastric muscle. And therefore, it is a main efferent of the cremastric reflex. Afferent was by the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. This is the efferent of the cremastric reflex, which is by the genital branch of genitofemoral nerve, which is also the content of the spermatic cord. What else will be seen within the layer of the, sp uh, the spermatic cord? will also appreciate some blood vessels which are supplying the cremastric muscle and fascia and these are the cremastric vessels which are also to be seen. Cremastric vessels are also to be seen in the wall of the... So these are the contents of the spermatic cord. As we said, uh, the important thing to know is this, that what layer will continue as uh, which layer of the spermatic cord. So, uh, external oblique aponeurosis is forming the external spermatic fascia. Cremastric is coming from internal oblique. Nothing from transverse abdominis. And then we have fascia transversalis which is continuing to form the internal spermatic fascia. So all these contents of the spermatic cord, as I said, ultimately they are also the content of the inguinal canal. Now, talking about spermatic cord, guys, the, the layers of the spermatic cord will obviously run around the scrotum as well. So, the layers in the scrotum are also corresponding here. So, if we talk about the layers of scrotum, the only thing to remember here, when you talk about the layers of the scrotum, The first or the outermost layer here is the skin. Well, the same skin of the anterior abdominal wall will continue to form the skin of the scrotum as well. The important thing here is to remember the second fascia, which is called as a dartos muscle and fascia. Dartos muscle and fascia. This is the layer which is having this dartos muscle and fascia, which we will again talk about in the perineum as well. This is the dartos. And once again, important thing to note that Dartos muscle is actually continuation of superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall. There is no D fascia on the anterior abdominal wall. We have Camper's fascia and we have Scarpa's fascia. So that Camper's and Scarpa's fascia, that Camper's and the Scarpa's fascia is the one which will be seen continuing and forms the Dartos muscle in the scrotum. Rest of the three layers, you already know about it. The, the one which is coming from the spermatic cord, we have external spermatic fascia. We'll have a cremastric fascia. And there will be internal spermatic fascia. These three you already know that is external spermatic fascia. Then we have this once again the cremastric fascia, not writing the whole thing. And then the innermost that is the 
internal spermatic fascia and then followed by the the tunica vaginalis and the layers of the testis so the testis will be seen inside with its layer so remember these are the layers of the scrotum and make sure you remember that what are they continuation of so skin coming from the skin only the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall scarpas and campers that will continue to form the dartos and then just behind the superficial fascia what we have external oblique muscle that external oblique aponeurosis will continue as external spermatic fascia internal oblique as cremastic fascia nothing from the transverse abdominis and fascia transversalis as internal spermatic fascia so this is about the layers of the scrotum and the layers of the spermatic cord and the contents of the spermatic cord